regular press attention of social media or augmented reality, agriculture has traditionally been a big industrial disruptor. In fact, today we are joined by two leading voices sounding the importance of ag science and STEM education for kids. Dr. Mae Jemison is the leader of the nonprofit 100 Year Starship and the first woman of color to fly in space. And Jennifer Sarangelo is the president and CEO of the National 4 H Council. And ladies, welcome to both of you. Thank it's you. great to see you here today. Um, people think National Ag Day, and maybe they don't realize how involved agricultural sciences have been in a lot of the development we've seen. I, I, I know there are things like in, in diabetes. The insulin that's developed comes from uh, some farm animals, uh, and that's how we get things. But what else should we know about? Well, agriculture science affects all of us every day. If you like to eat, if you like to be healthy and to have nutrition, you're going to be engaging with agriculture. So today we're so happy to be here for National Ag Day. I mean, I was looking through some of the developments, and it's kind of stunning. Even Band-Aids, the reason they stick to you are because of proteins, proteins. found in milk. What, what are some of the breaking edge, leading edge things that are happening right now? Well, right now, what the major developments in agriculture are many of them in electronic technology. So okay. from drones to precision agriculture, robotics, AI, all the data we gather every day around our soil, our plants, our air, our water has to be analyzed. So these are some of the emerging jobs and opportunities in agriculture that we're here to talk about today. I, I think sometimes when people think about agriculture, they miss the fact that from clothing you wear, as you were talking about different kinds of products that you use, and the fact that we all eat in the agricultural industry. Um, and its related uh, uh, industries is like 5% of the U.S. economy. It's a hmm. close to a trillion dollar kind of industry. This has impact. And fundamentally, we still have to eat, no matter what you say. By 2050, there'll be about 10 billion people in the world. Wow. We have to produce 60% more food. And we have to do it in a way that's sustainable. And um, so how do we do that? We have to get a whole bunch of folks much better involved with the agriculture industry and being really smart if, about it. If we it. made the same gains we made in the last 100 years, we'll be fine, right? Except for the, some of those gains we've Harder made in the last 100 years aren't sustainable over the long term, so we have to mm -hmm. do this even smarter. And we have to do it in such a way that we preserve the resources that we have on this planet. Right. That's the reason why we're so excited about the idea of getting more students involved with science literacy Agricultural science is improving. It. We need to work on the uh, the stigma of of using modern technology like genetics to to improve yields and things. Like, I mean, it, it, at Whole Foods, if it has anything to do with GMO. with GMOs, it's like you can't have it. When I, you know, I, I would, they better not you know need any medicine that was developed through genetically uh, you know but, but altered. There's, there's a range of things that are available, and what happens when you get people who are well uh, versed in this? You get a range of information that's available from the production to the distribution to the how you prepare foods, all the way through. So it's that whole range of things. Whether you use uh, some you know, uh, genetic manipulation or whether or not you look at how do you grow things in the soil. All of that is important. It, see, it seems like the advances that are being made, you know, just breakneck pace at this point in, in biology. Mm -hmm. We should be pretty good at, 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 at the challenges you're talking about. Sustainability, greater yields, uh, healthier. I, I just, I'd be very bullish. I wouldn't be Malthusian at all about running out. I'd be very bullish. No, no well, so, so here's the thing. What we've done over the past uh, year with 4-H, Bear and 4-H, did a survey of teachers. 80% of high school science teachers said that they believe that it's important to teach agricultural sciences. Less than 50% of them feel comfortable, and only 22% of them actually teach it in their classrooms. Mm -hmm. So no matter what kinds of incredible work is being done in the laboratories, if you don't have the people able to fill the jobs, it's not going to matter. Jennifer, what are you doing well, to try and fix certainly. that? Certainly. Well, currently, USDA estimates there are tens of thousands of jobs in agriculture companies that are going unfilled. Because so we can't we find qualified people for it? We can't find qualified people here in the U.S. So that's what Bayer and National 4-H Council have set out to do, is to really raise awareness of the importance of agriculture science 
for our health, our nutrition, our food supply, we take for granted in the U.S. our safe and abundant. If you've ever what's the problem? Is it food supply? Is it that it's not sexy? We think of things like people want to go to Silicon Valley and create self-driving mm -hmm. cars and learn how to code. It's true, but when you think about how a young person can apply science in a way that's going to affect everyone's life and make it better every day, mm -hmm. food, nutrition, health. Those are everyday needs. And this is really, um, for us, we're inspiring young people. We believe that they can make a difference in the world and really empower them through agriculture science. Dr. Jameson, I've, I've spoken with you in the past about mm -hmm. STEM, just in general, right. how eager you are to try and get young people involved in STEM. But how much tougher is, is this, agricultural sciences? Well, you know that the agricultural sciences, there's some differences. But as you were saying, a lot of it is life sciences and biology. A lot of it, I was a chemical engineer as an undergraduate. You do chemical engineering. Coding, right? Because now we have to understand, you know, we can monitor the, the water in the soil. You can use space technology. You can remotely sense and see the crops and land management. So it's really about getting that information out to folks and exposing them to what, what can actually happen, right? The kind of, yeah. what did you call it, sexy jobs yeah, that you can exactly. have, right? <laughs> right. Where our food comes from is really important to all of us. And for kids, it's kind of a gateway science. Everybody wants to grow a seed, watch it grow, yeah, you uh, plants, animals. Preschool, right? It's a starting point and um, growing into all the other technologies that are available in agriculture. But if you've ever been on a modern day farm, which I've had the pleasure of doing, um, you see the stewardship that our farmers um, put into every um, kind of food that we eat, from dairies to crops. And they are really our stewards of our, um, of our environment. And today on National Ag Day, we're excited to celebrate what they do and to bring even more young people into agriculture science. Ladies, and thank you. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and it's the first day of spring, and but parents... It is. And it's going to snow. It's the... <laughs> <laughs> if parents want to learn more about ag science, thanks to Bayer, they can go to 4h.org forward slash Bayer and learn Easter, more for activities and things for uh, them and their kids. Nor'easter bearing down us. I don't, I don't know how you get people, to, we, are we getting better at STEM and, and getting people to do that? Are, are other parts of the world better than us or are we getting better? There, there are other parts of the world we need better to do on something. tests. But the issue is really just exposure and experience and expectation. Kids love science. They love yeah. bugs, snails, oh, really? all that uh, kind of you're stuff. Going to, to have fun at college and, and, and uh, your major is going to be chemical engineer. Really? You, you be a chemical engineer. I'm not being a technician. It's just right? hard, though. To, it's, they got to work. They can't go out every night. If they're that's taking chemical engineering, they're not going out. I went out. <laughs> not every night. No, I don't a lot believe. of nights. <laughs> and still got through chemical she engineering. Do it. She didn't have to fully. You must be smart, because so uh, you know. But 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 it, but I think that that that's part of the fallacy is this whole idea really? that people can't be involved. All I'm going to be a communications major. The people, who, the people I'm sorry. who built the space shuttle, yeah. right, were technicians. They were two-year degrees. The people who do a lot of the technical work, they're not four-year degree engineers. Okay. And so what we're really talking about is science literacy. And you need science literacy I know. for your job. I know. He, he, he was an MIT. I was. I, know he was I, was, but, I, I saw it. But nowadays, if you're sciences. going to school, and I mean, it's the best four years of your life, and you're going to some great school, you know, and it's like, chemical engineer, I'm going to be in the library every night, you know, and you really do need to I keep, you I keep bear telling down. you it wasn't that way. Really? And I went to Stanford. Yeah, I was out on the farm. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Jemison, thank you so much for joining us. Jennifer, thank, thank you. you. And don't forget, guys, it's National Ag Day. We're going to celebrate that. Let's get you caught up with some of the stories that are front and center this morning. Uh, falling mall traffic is sending yet another retailer into Chapter 11. Claire's Stores, which is the seller of teen accessories.